Good evening everyone, this is Robert Jamison. So welcome to our Thursday night online chess training session. I see we've got a good number of you, uh, 19 or so, attending this evening. So welcome. Uh, quite a few of you have played in the last weekend, so the Grand Prix tournament down in Hobart. So we hope you've got some good games and experience of that. I saw uh, Max did rather well, performed about 1290 rating. And uh, hopefully William got a bit of experience who was with us last week and hasn't played in any uh, rated tournament games. So that was great that you guys are playing in a, a big open tournament like that. Now, today I have with me a young man, James Sherborne. Hello, James. Hello. Oh, how are you today? Good. Well, you just rushed from footy practice or something, have you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, I put your profile on there. I think for people to have a look at. So you go to, what is it, Elstonwick Primary School? Yes. Okay, and your chess rating is about 664? Yes. Okay, and how old are you? Nine years. Nine years, oh, that's not a bad rating for a nine year old. Have you been playing much chess at all or, or just a little bit? No, just a little bit. Yeah, okay, you're obviously doing a lot of other things. And in fact, David tells me you, you uh, have a special skill apart from being a chess player. Something you're rather good at? Yeah. Are you, you want to tell everyone what it is? No thanks. No thanks? Okay, I'll dob you in. David tells me that uh, James is an opera singer. So hopefully we'll have a nice loud voice for our uh, chess game tonight. I won't ask you to sing, so that's okay. All right, now to start off everyone, um, I had a position there, uh, Mason Carter versus Kevin Bonham from the Hobart Open, that I hope you've all had a bit of a look at. Uh, it was rather interesting because uh, Kevin Bottom was the organiser of the tournament and this was a last round game apparently and they're all waiting for the tournament to finish and present the prize and stuff. But one game went for 124 moves and of course it was Kevin's own game. But about 60 moves in they had this position which is rather strange because before Kevin had an easy win at black but he kept missing it and then his opponent had an easy draw and he kept missing it and so Black ended up winning in another 60 moves from this position. So I thought it was strange that uh, quite a good player didn't know a fairly obvious drawing line. So I don't know whether you guys know much about Rook and Point Endings but I thought I'd give you a little test today. So if Black's got a knight pawn like this and he's trying to get it through to G1 to Queen obviously and White's got the clock, what drawing method should White use? Where should he put his rook? So I've given you five spots. He should leave the bases on h8, g8, a8, a3, or a1. So that's my little poll. I hope James has worked out his answer and we'll ask him in a minute. So if you could work out which you think is the drawing position for the rook, and I'll launch the poll. So there we go. So if people can vote whether they want their rook on h8, g8, a8, a3, or a1. So start voting. Can't see any votes yet. Oh yes, here we go. a3 is hit the lead. g 8s coming second. The others are doing pretty poorly. a3 zoomed well into the lead. All right, I'll give you five more seconds before we close it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's close the poll. Now let's have a look at the results. Uh, just move this over there on my screen. Okay, so what have we got? We've got 61% um, like the rook on A3, 22% wanted on G8, and 6%, which I'm guessing probably one person, wants it on H8, one wants it on A8, and one wants it on A1. Okay, interesting. Right, so now, James, you've had a, a little look at this. So did you decide where you want to put your rook? I'd probably put it on A3. A3. Why do you like A3? Because it's putting pressure on the king and sort of distracting it from... Okay, he might put the rook in the way though. So, um, like, oops, hang on. Zoom to the wrong spot. So, you're saying rook a3. Oh, 
and he could probably hit it hose with a rook. And if you take it, you lose the pawn ending. So your rook's not going to be able to stay on a3. So that was a good try. So right, let's let's see if we can work it out. Uh, go back to the start. Come on. Uh, now sort of a bit slow today. There we go. All right. So what's Black trying to do? Do you think? Promote the pawn. Yeah, he's trying to get the pawn through. So why can't he get the pawn through now? The, king, the, the king's, king's got it king's blocked. So what does Black want to do with that king? Get it out of the way. So he wants to either maybe checkmate it there on the back rank or get it out of the way. Okay. So how's he going to get the king out of the way? What what could he do to get the king out of the way? He'd have to do it with the rook. Where would his rook go to get the king out of the way? Not sure. Alright, what if he got his rook on the first rank? So like if he got his rook to B1 or C1 or D1 or something? It would either be checkmate or my king might have gone to F1 and not have to get out of the way. Yeah. Okay, so that's how he's going to get us out of the way. So how can we stop that? If his rook coming out of the first rank is going to be a problem for us, how can we stop that? We could move that rook down there. We could move the rook all the way down to A1. Okay, and guess what? That's the drawing method and only one person said it. Now why is it a draw? It's because Let's say, how can Black improve his position? Let's say he plays Rook there or something. We just move our Rook. So he can like check us through in front, but we just hide in the corner. How does he get us out of the corner? He can check us again. We go there. So he can't, with front checks, get us out of the corner. We're just going to have to repeat position. And it's a draw. So that's a basic method. So if you want to be good at Rook endings, remember, if he's got a B pawn or a G pawn and you've got your king in front of it, all you've got to do is put your rook on the first rank, you get a nice easy draw. But the poor guy in Hobart, he played on for another 60 moves and uh, didn't quite manage it. All right. Uh, now, for you guys out there, uh, David is hopefully going to be manning the chat question function, assuming he's home by now. So if you guys want to chat today, but that's fine. And at various stages, I'll ask you questions, uh, like what move is best or something, and you can reply on the question, and we'll see if you can get the right answer as we go through. All right, so let's now have a look at one of James' games. We'll start off with a game against someone named Lachlan Martin, who I would talk to, except when I unmute him, he doesn't talk back to me. So that makes it a bit hard, but never mind. All right. When did you play this game? Do you remember? Last Saturday. Last Saturday, okay. It was an online game or with Carl's coaching group or something? With Carl's With group. Carl's group. All right. Oh, well, Lachlan's a good player, so we'll see how we go against him. All right, let's see. So you were white. You start off. You play e4, e5, because that's what all juniors do. You played knight f3. That was good. He played knight c6. You put your other knight out, so all this is pretty standard junior stuff. Four knights uh, opening. You played bishop b5. What, why did you play bishop b5? Why do you like that square? Because I'm sort of more solitaire, and I like to swap off pieces and then... So you want to take his knight? Is that the idea? Yeah. So if he did a non-move, like he just moved his bishop somewhere, would you take his knight next move? Would that be a good idea for you? Depends where the bishop went. Okay. All right. Well, tell me why you want to swap the bishop for the knight. Why is that a good plan? You just like swapping, or? Yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of young players, they like swapping because it's something to do, and they like taking and getting taken back and all that sort of stuff. But that's not probably the best idea. What we do is we only do a swap if it's to our advantage. So like if he's got a really good knight and our bishop is lousy, then we do the swap. Or if it uh, mucks up his pawn structure or something like that, uh, then we might do the swap. But anyway, bishop uh, to b5, that's a good square for the bishop because even if you don't take the knight, you might be threatening to take it and then win his e-pawn because you've got his e-pawn attacked by your knight. So I'd rather prefer b5 than c4, say. Let's see what Lockstorm does. He puts it out on c5, because that's okay. He castle, that's nice, we've got our king safe. He castles, 
Okay, so far so good. Uh, now, let's have a look. You take it. Ah, all right. So you're going in for the swap. Yeah. All right, well, why did you want to take it? You, have you got a plan to, to win something or? or? So you might be able to win the e pawn if you take the knife. Okay, so if you can win a pawn for taking the knife, that'd be good. All right, so you take, he takes back. Okay, so the question is, can you win his pawn? Let's have a little poll. So I want people to think it's um, James's move now is white, and he's thinking he might be able to take that pawn on e5 and be a pawn up. So the question is, does that win a pawn, or maybe he should be doing something else? So make up your mind, and I'll launch a little poll. You can go yes or no, does knight takes e5 win a pawn? So here we go with our poll. So start voting. So far, no's in the lead. Yes is catching up a little bit, but no's still well ahead. Looks like no's going to win by a big majority. Okay, let's close the poll. Five seconds ago, one, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look. So we reckon. 81% says, no, it doesn't win a pawn, and 19% say it does. All right. Now, so James, they're be telling you it doesn't win a pawn. Why would that be? Can't you just take it and you're a pawn up? Well, if it wins the pawns out, then it, it might be just me having to go back and figure out what you Right, but you've taken a pawn. Can he get the pawn back? Let's see if uh, you can help us. Uh, Haran. Are you there, Haran? Can you hear me? Talk to me, Haran, if you can hear me. No, I'm not getting any people talking to you today. That's a pity. All right, so what would happen? Let's say you take the pawn. My mouse is hanging itself. Right. He played rook e8. Now, that doesn't win the pawn back, because you have a sneaky move. What could he have done instead? What could he, are there any straight pieces he could attack? What could he do? He could move his bishop to a6 and attack the rook. Uh, he could move bishop to a6 and attack the rook, but then white would just play d3 and defend that. What he could have done, he could have played bishop d4, which he missed. So now he's hitting your knight on e5, so if the knight moves, then he takes on c3, and then he'll be able to win your e4 back with his knight, see? So he could have got the pawn back, so I hope that's what all you guys were thinking when you ticked that it doesn't win a pawn. But Lockwood didn't do that. He went for rook e8. Now you Hit him with d4, that's obvious move, protecting the knight, attacking the bishop, so that's really, really good. Okay, he came up with d6. So he's trying to chase you away, but now his c pawn is a bit loose. So, this is a bit interesting here, because you've got a knight attack, he's got a bishop attack, you could take a pawn. I wonder what the best move is. Uh, I want people to have a little bit of a think. Uh, choose what you would play here for white. Would you take his bishop? Would you move your knight somewhere to get the knight out of attack? Would you maybe take his c pawn? So I've got a little poll here, hopefully. So we'll just so there's options again. Knight takes c6 is one option. Move the knight back, say, to f3. So if we've got our knight out of attack and we're attacking his bishop. We could play pawn take c5, or we could perhaps play some other move. So I'll launch the poll. So tell me what you guys think. Would you play knight take c6, knight f3, 
D takes C5 or some other move. Knight takes C6 is hitting the lead. Looking pretty good. D takes C5 is coming second. People like taking stuff. No one likes Knight F3 so far. And 16% want some other move. 15% want some other move. All right. Five more seconds will close the poll. One, two, three, four, five. Close the poll. More mouse. All right. Let's have a look at the results. So most people want to take the pawn. 48%. 38% want to take the bishop. No one wants to move the knight back. That's strange. Maybe they don't like retreating. And 14% want some other move. Right. Now, the question is, um, what other move would they make? We don't know, do we? So would you make another move, or what move did you choose, James? What do you think? C6. So you want to take on C6. Why do you choose take on C6? Because if that's attacking the queen, yep. so it's probable. Yeah, it's probably in the queen. queen. Yep. And then you up. Okay, so you picked up a pawn a long way. You're thinking. Yeah. All right. Now, do you remember what I say when when the sort of like tactical position is on? What what you should be looking out for? Do I say examine all or what? Do you remember? Okay. What I say is that examine all checks and captures. So if you think you've got a tactical position, look at all checks and captures. Now, white in fact has a pretty good capture here. That wasn't one of the three moves I looked at. So those 14% who said other move, if you chose knight takes f7, go to the top of the class because that's a better way to sacrifice our knight. So say he plays king takes, we can take his bishop. Now, he takes our pawn back here. We're just a pawn ahead and we've stuffed up all his pawns and everything. And if his knight was to take here, what could we do then, James? Could you see a, a good plan for white? Take the knight. Take the knight. All right, he has to take with the rook. And what do we hit him with then? Remember, look at all checks and captures. The queen. Queen to where? Queen to f3. Look at that, we pick up his rook. So that would be super. So we can't win his pawn back like that. So. The best move was knight takes f7, which was a bit hard to see. But I want you guys, as I say, examine all checks and captures. In the game, we played knight takes c6. All right, and Lockie moved his queen, which is pretty obvious. Now, what can we do here? Um, he's attacking our knight. We were attacking his bishop. What do you reckon we should do? I'm not sure. Not sure? Because you played a slightly funny move. You didn't protect your knight and you didn't take his bishop. You developed your bishop. You remember what your plan was there? No. You probably wanted to take his knight, I think, and muck up his pawns, maybe? Yeah, probably. Probably. But can you see a good reply to black where he can pick up your pawn? What do you think black might reply? Queen takes. He could play queen takes knight, but then you could take his knight and then take his bishop or something. So if you're attacking his knight, right, that means he's got a kamikaze knight. Would his knight do something good? His knight can maybe take your e-pawn. Yeah, so this is probably not the best. For you guys, it's, it's always dangerous in a situation where like you're attacking a piece, he's attacking a piece if you do something different because it means they've got like kamikaze pieces that can sacrifice themselves while they're waiting. So you're probably better off to take something or, or protect your knight. So what happens here is he takes e4. So he's gotten out of your threat to take on f6 and he's picked up a free pawn. So now your knight on g, your bishop on g5 is undefended. So you're pretty well to take him back. Now again, he could take either knight or he could move his bishop. Um, what he played, I think, was rook takes knight. All right. So now, James, what's happening here? So we've still got his bishop attacked, our knight's attacked, but we're a pawn. What, what do you think we should do? I don't know. Okay, well, let's, let's see if we can look at it. So if we take his bishop, 
he takes our knight. It's piece for piece. That's probably not too bad. All right, we could attack his rook, maybe, because his rook would just move somewhere, so we probably haven't gained much by that. Now, do we move our knight somewhere so it's safe? Yes. Where do we move our knight to? What do you think? A5. We could move it to A5, but that would mean our D-form was unprotected and he could just oh. take it with a rook or something. Any other move? move we could push eight. the... Uh, we could move it to D8, but that's right in the middle of the enemy territory. We could probably play a pawn to F6 or something and then our poor old knight's undefended. Anywhere else you might look at putting that knight? Not really? E7. E7. Would that be a good move? Remember I said to examine all checks and captures and that's a check, isn't it? So let's have a look. Would that be a, would that be a good check? What would, he, what would he do? If he moves his king, we just take his bishop and we're a piece up, aren't we? So what he'd have to do is he'd probably have to play a rook tax. Will you take with the bishop? Now, if he takes our bishop, we can take his bishop. So who's ahead on material? Yes. You. How much extra material you got? One. You've got the exchange. You've got rook for bishop. So that would probably be pretty good for you. You would have picked up the exchange maybe. So if you had a say 97, that would have been a good move. So again, at the question, maybe you didn't look at all the, the checks. So what you actually did was you took his bishop. Junior's like taking pieces. So that's a natural thing. If you've got something you can take, you take it. So he took your knight. That's fair enough. Now, we are still a pawn ahead, but he's attacking our pawn. What, what should we do, do you think? Should we swap off the pawns or do something else? Well, we could attack his rook. We could attack his rook. What would we attack his rook with? Maybe. So you want to play rook e1 and have a swap off of rooks, maybe? Maybe. Okay. Would he take your rook or would he do something different? So if you went rook e1 like this, what would he do in reply? Sure. He might play rook here. Is this a bit of a, a pain for you? What's he threatening? To take my bishop. And? To checkmate. He's got checkmate on g2, so he's got a double attack. Yuck. Alright, so that wouldn't be so good. So, what can we, what can we do? Okay, uh, let's have a look. What if we could... Um, also, I've got to put the rook back because I put the rook in the wrong spot. Okay, we could play bishop e3. That would get the bishop out of the attack, and if he plays rook g4, we can just play f3 and chase it away. So that would be pretty good. But what you played... You played pawn takes pawn, and Lachlan must have been asleep at the time too, and he likes capturing. So what should he play here, do you reckon, to pick up a piece and, with a double attack? He should play rook g4, like we just did. That would pick up a nice piece and be pretty good. But Chess players are often in automatic moves. You know, you you do a take, I take it back. It doesn't take a long, obvious thing to do. But so what he did is he missed it and took back with the pawn. Okay, all right. So how are we going? Let's assess the position. Has the material going? You ahead or behind? Yeah. Yep. You got one extra pawn, haven't you? Yeah. All right, so that's pretty good. So how are we going on position, though? Yes. You, why, why are you worse? My rooks aren't enough. 
bishop and my knight is not really doing that. Yeah, you've only got the bishop developed. And is is his bishop going to be stronger or your bishop going to be stronger? Probably his. He's, he's aiming at my king. Yeah, he's going to put his bishop. Where is he going to put his bishop, do you think? Maybe h3 and then... No, you might be able to take it, so you've got to be careful. What if he put the bishop behind the queen? Like if he played um, bishop b7 or something, so the yeah. queen and the bishop are lined up, moves the rook out of the way, the discovered checkmate on g2, that would be pretty scary. So he's going to have a good bishop. All right, so what, what should we do to, to stop all this? What would be a really good move for us, do you think? Maybe try to attack with the queen. Where will we put the queen? Well, maybe we could attack the rook with the pawn. Ah, um, very good, yeah. yeah. So pawn to f3, that will be the best move because we're attacking his rook. And what, why else would that be a good move? How does that help our position? It gets my rook more active. Opens it up for your rook a little bit. Yeah, any other reason? Have a look at what colour the pawn's on. What colour is the pawn? White. It's on a white square. Okay, and so what colour is this bishop on? Okay. White square. So if you put all your pawns on white squares, that's going to restrict where his bishop can go, isn't it? And your bishop would be able to roam around the place wherever it likes. Okay, so in general, putting pawn on f3, that blocks the diagonal, takes away some squares from your bishop, takes it off. So that would have been a really good move. Okay, the move you came up with wasn't quite so good. You played c3. Do you remember why you wanted to play c3? No. No, I'm not sure why either. Maybe you want to move your queen somewhere. But now, we have a problem. So let's say you decided you're going to play c3. What should you ask yourself before you make the move? Do you have a question you should ask yourself? Do you remember what I keep saying to people so that they don't make a mistake? Don't you remember? Yeah. No, okay. What you should do is when you decided on your move, before you play it, you've got to check it. So you've got to say, what is he going to reply? Maybe he's got some really good move you haven't noticed. So in this position, Lachlan finally came up with a really good move, rook g4, with a double attack on our bishop and our g2 pawn. So we're in a bit of a pickle. That's why I've got to ask yourself the question. You might pick up the, the fact that you can play a different move. So you went f3, so got to get out of the mate. He took the bishop. Okay. So, we're a bishop down for a pawn, but it's not hopeless. What should we do now? What sort of moves would you like to play for why? Well, if I move one of my, if I try and move my queen out, then there's not much defense with my king. Right, so what do you think you should do? You haven't got any pieces developed at the moment, so we should be trying to develop something, shouldn't we? Yes. So what, what could we do? Move the king on, move the queen to f, from f to e1. Uh, hang on, the queen's on d1. Whoops, hang on, I'm going to myself. What you play is queen e2. It gets your queen off the back rank. Well, was that a good move or a bad move? Do you remember what he did in reply? No. Ouch! Look at that, bishop a6, hitting our queen and our rook. So, a terrible thing has happened, so let's go back. So again, um, what you probably should have done, maybe rook f2, something like that, to get the rook off the same square as the bishop, and then that rook's defending our second rank and it's all nice and safe, so it wouldn't have been too bad. But the problem is, again, you've decided on your move, but you haven't said, what's he going to reply? See, because you're not looking ahead enough. So he, he can't. Where are we? Queen e2, he hits you with a nasty bishop. 
a six. Right, so you move the queen, he chops. Now, should you take with the rook or the bishop? Uh, sorry, the rook or the queen? Rook or the queen, or even the king. Which do you reckon would be the best? Rook. The rook. Why would the rook be the best? Yeah, you developed your rook. Guess which one you took with? Yeah. You took with the queen. Okay, bad move. Never mind. So he developed his rook. That was good. All right, so now we're a rook down for nothing. It's pretty terrible. What, what should we do? What sort, of, what sort of play should we have now? Defense. We should try and get a solid defence and make it as hard as possible for him and hope he makes a blunder. But he didn't quite do that. He hit him. He thought, oh, well, I'll try and take his rook if he's not looking. But that opens it up again and doesn't develop our rook. Our rook is still sitting there unmoved. So he came along there. Now we probably should say play rook d1 or something like that. But you went for a swap. Is it good to swap off rooks when you rook down? Yeah. No. So that's a bad move. When we're down in pieces, we try and stop off the pawns. And worse than that, what happens if we take if we take him back? Then my queen's not really okay. And it's checkmate in one on g2. Yuck. He can play queen at g2. So we have to go up and then terrible things happen. And he zoomed in and it was good. So well done to Lachlan. Even if you can't turn your mic on and talk to me, Lachlan. Okay, so what could we learn from this game? What sort of mistakes did you make? I didn't look at, look at what yeah, you didn't look at what your opponent's going to reply some of the time. Any other things we, we might have missed or could do a little bit better? Yeah, I missed a few moves. Yeah, so look look at those checks and captures. Remember that knight takes f7 we missed? Or the knight e7 check we missed? So if you just look at a few more moves and look at what he's going to reply and you should do a bit better. Anyway, that was an interesting game. So let's load our next game. It's against someone called Carl Gorka. So you don't you don't play the easy guys, do you? You're playing the, the tough guys. All right. So you've got white. So that's a good start. So let's get moving. See how we go against Carl. This is looking pretty familiar. Oh, now that's different. You put out the knight before, so what, why are you putting out the bishop and playing the right of the now? Can you remember or? No. No? Could the cow just give you a lesson on the right of the maybe? Well, he's um, told me to use that opening. Yep, okay. Yeah, that's a good opening. It's probably better than knight c3, so you're doing well. Cow went a6. He probably didn't realise you were going to take the knight anyway, so he's put in the question of the bishop, and you took the knight. That's my favourite thing too. I used to play this all the time. Exchange low things. All right. Can you win a pawn by just taking that e-pawn there? Does that win a pawn or can he get it back? Let's say you took him. What would he reply? He might attack my... Knight. The queen? Where would the queen go? Um, to could, could go to d4 like that, and then he's got a double attack and gets his pawn back. Alright, so we don't really even a pawn like that. So we'll just castle instead. Okay, so far so good. Uh, he plays f6. That's the normal move. Right, now. Okay, let's have a little quiz. I don't know whether you guys know the exchange low pays very well or not. Um, I'll just get my poll ready. Right, so let's say we're with James in this position. Exchange low pairs, we're white, we've castled, made our king nice and safe. He hasn't got any pieces developed, so it's our turn. So we've got a few moves we could choose from. Um, so what moves will we have a look at? Uh, 
what what candidate moves would you look at here, James? What do you think? Maybe D four. You could play D four. Anything else you could have a look at? What about knight C three? That'd be a good developing move, wouldn't it? Knight C three, yep. Yeah. All right, that's two moves we could have a look at. What about pawn to d3 to make our, our pawns nice and safe if we pick that e4? Would that be all right? Okay. Okay, all right, and we want one more move. Um, what else could we do? What about uh, h3 to stop our bishop coming out and pinning us? Does that appeal? h3? Maybe? Maybe. Hmm. All right, so we'll give you guys the choice. So you've got four moves to choose from. You could play d4, d3, knight c3, or h3. I'll just say that one more time. d4, d3, knight c3, or h3. So, the poll is now launched. Start your voting. At the moment, knight c3 is in control. No d4 has come up level. Knight c3 is back in front. A little bit of support for d3 and h3. Knight C3 has got 50%. Everyone voted. All right, I shall close the poll. I can press the right button. Okay, let's have a look. So 45% want Knight C3, 40% want D4, 95% want D3, and 10% want H3. Interesting. All right. So let's have a look. Um, knight c3, well, it's a developing move and it's a good square for the knight, uh, so it's sort of all right. h3, um, probably a bad move, I mean it's an okay useful little move. Uh, and it stops the pin, but it does create a target for an attack later. So if he's going to play g5 and g4 and stuff like that, it's sort of giving him a target. d3. Uh, possible. What, do you like d3 or not, James? What do you think? I don't really like it. I, I don't like it either. It's very passive. So the best move is... D4. Now, all of those of you who remembered my chats early on, I talked about getting two pawns side by side in the opening, so you've got a middle game plan. Well, this is one of those positions. So D4 is is good. Now, if, for instance, um, he played bishop G4 now, we can go take... Uh, he might take our queen. We might take his queen, he takes the pawn, and then we play rook d3 to cover our knight if he wants to take it. And we've got quite a nice position for white, and our rook's in it, and we've got an open pile, all that sort of stuff. So d4 is definitely the way to go. In the game, though, I think you chose knight c3 from memory, and he came out and pinned us which is a bit of a pain. All right. Um, now, the question is, what do we do? Because that, that pin sort of annoying me. So let's have another little poll. Um, I'll give you a choice of four ideas again. So would you guys want to play D3, H3, with the question to the bishop, Queen E1, to get out of the pin, or queen e2, to develop the queen but stay in the pin. So you've got the choice of four, d3, queen e1, queen e2, h3. Let me just get my poll ready. All right, launch the poll, here we go. So we've got d3, h3, queen e1, queen e2. Now h3 is hit the front, oh no, queen e2 is hit the lead now. Queen E2 is still in the lead, H3 is coming second, D3 is coming third. Queen E2 is looking pretty popular. All right, I'll close the poll in a second. Here we go, close the poll. Let's have a look at the results. Okay, Queen E2. 
more than half like Queen E2. H3 comes second, D3 well back, and only 5% want Queen E1. So which move do you like, James? What do you think? Queen E2. Queen E2 is not bad. Guess what you played in the game? Queen E1. Do you remember why you played Queen E1? No. Okay. Why do, why do you think you might want to play Queen E1? It's out of the pin. So is that, is that a good idea? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not that idea. Actually, it's interesting because the guy we had last week, William from Tasmania, I went through one of his games and he did exactly the same thing. The guy pinned him and he put the Queen on E1. Now, what's the problem with putting the Queen on, on E1? Is that a good square for the Queen? Not really. Not really. You haven't really developed it much. It's in the way of your rooks and stuff. And we're trying to put our pieces on good squares. So E1 is not so hot. Um, let's go back. Were it me, I think I would probably play H3. Now, if he takes us, that's good. We can recapture the developing move. And if he goes back to keep that pin, then I have the option later on, I can play G4, break the pin and chase him away now. So that wouldn't be too bad. Might open up the king a bit, but never mind. Anyway, you went for queen E1. Now he didn't take it. He went queen D7. And your knight went over there. What? Where's your knight going? What's, what's happening there? Do you remember what your idea was? I'm not sure. I can leave it to get the Okay, you're scared of him taking or not? Let's go back. So if he takes your knight, is that going to be good or bad? What do you think? It's hard to tell? Or? Yes. Yeah, I think if, if he takes the knight, you've got a couple of pawns and your king's a bit open, but you can't really follow it up if you play queen h3 attacking your pawn, but you just play queen e2 or e3 or something, and you can defend it quite adequately. So I wouldn't be scared of him taking it. So again, H4. Is that a good square for the knight? No. No, he's on the edge of the board, isn't he? He's not really attacking or doing anything. He's just out of the way there. Probably in the road, actually. So you've made two moves where you put your pieces on bad squares. So that's a little bit of a problem. But Carl was kind. He didn't attack it straight away. He castled. You went to D3. Then he hit us. Okay. So now we've got a bit of a problem. We've only got two squares to go to, F5 or F3. What do you think? Five. You want to go to F5? Why F5? Because the yeah, but he can take it with the bishop and then his queen will take and then win a pawn, won't he? Yes. All right, so what about F3? Can he win a pawn if you go back to F3? I'm not sure. Oh, probably not, not straight away or anything. Um, so F3 might be the best option. You went to F5. Okay. So he, he took you. And then he was sneaky. He didn't take it back to the queen straight away. He brought the knight out because he wants to take the knight from the look of it. Okay. A bit of a predicament. So you went knight E4. So that's okay. He put a counter attack on his, his F pawn. He took you. All right. Um, what do you think we should play here? What move would you like to look at here? If you're right. Um, probably mm, What would be a good defensive move? Knight. Knight's g3, chasing his queen away, maybe. Any other moves you want to have a look at? We've only got one piece developed so far, so that's not very good on the development. Maybe we could just play bishop e3. Yeah. Well, what about queen e3? Would that, would that be a, a good move or not? Be okay. be okay. Actually, it's a sneaky move because it has a threat that you might not notice. Queen going all the way up to a7, and then you're in there checking him and trying to pick up that b pawn and stuff like that. So he might not notice that. So queen actually is possible. 
you played a really strange movie. Do you remember what you played? No, but I remember playing a movie here, which I was just about to All right, here it is, coming up now to a, a shop near you. You played No Takes Porn. Did you, did you work out what he was going to reply to that? No. What do you think he's going to reply now? Is he going to take it? Porn takes night? They lost a night for porn. Yeah. Was that a good plan? No. No, that's a lousy plan. Okay. So why do you, why do you reckon you missed that? So I wasn't listening again? Yeah. So again, you forgot to say what's he going to reply. So that was the, the fatal mistake. All right. So Carl took us. Okay. So we're in strife. We're a piece down. We've got a reasonably good move here. What, what could we come up with here that's going to attack something? Any ideas? We'll have a look at it a second ago. Has he got something we can get a double attack on? Mm. We could play Queen E3. That would be a double attack on his G pawn and threatening to go to A7 again. So that was probably the best one. But it's pretty hard. You did what did you do? You went C3. Any idea why I played C3? Yeah. Normally, is it a developing move? Yeah. No. No. And he, if he wants, he could just take that pawn on d3. So that's another strange move. He took pity on your pawn, and he played bishop d6. All right. Then you did another strange move. d4. What are you up to there? Well, just to take the... off some pieces again, maybe. Yeah. The trouble is he can take and, and win a pawn if he wants, because he could just take again. But he gets sneaky and goes to attack on the H2 ball. Okay, what should, what should we do here? He's got a double attack on H2. Can you get out of it? Yeah. Well, what if he played H3? Wouldn't that be okay? He's nice, got to run away. Be okay. Or maybe you could put the knight in an h2 and pick up an exchange. But you wouldn't be checkmate, that's the good bit. Maybe you could play g3. Anyway, you you forgot to say what is he threatening, and you would push b3 again. And of course he jumped in, thank you very much, in the corner. And he played this sneaky show-off move, saying take my bishop pretty please, and I just got checkmate with a queen. But there's really nothing you can do now. You just move the rook. And he jumped in for a checkmate. Okay. So anyway, you lasted fairly fairly well against Carl. He's a very strong player. Okay, so what can we learn from that game then? Basically, same the same thing. The same thing, yeah. Okay, so it's all, all about tactics. We're making blunders because we're not asking ourselves what is he threatening and when we decided on our move, we should be saying what's the matter of what, so we can pick up the, the blunders we might be making. You're going okay to you play knight takes f6 and lost that. Anyway, that's good practice, so well done. You're playing in any tournaments soon coming up, or are you just playing in school? Or? No, I don't play at school. You don't play at school? RJ Shield, you don't play RJ Shield maybe? I think you played in one of them a few months ago. Yeah. I played in months and not mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's online chess if you can. Lots of people play online chess and have a great time. All right, so that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you all enjoyed it today, and uh, I hope you learned something from watching James's games. Uh, next week we have Ryan in here, so I'm looking forward to having a look at some of Ryan's games. I hope you've got some good ones. If not, you better play Carl quickly and give me some score sheets, Ryan. So thank you very much, everyone, and uh, that's the end of the lesson. We'll see you all next week. The organizer has ended the session.